Windows Firewall, you've all heard of it, but what do you really use it for? By default, you likely see that it says it's green and it's working and that's probably good. And maybe once in a while you get an alert for a video game that you need to allow. So you have that annoying pop-up that you need to click on. But other than that, you probably never use it. First of all, by default, you may not realize, but Windows Firewall has a lot of rules. And what it's doing is it's filtering some of the traffic coming in and out of your system. Which is why when an application connects to the internet in a non-standard way, it typically has to create an exception within Windows Firewall to allow that type of connection. However, these rules are quite generic and they don't really do any kind of blacklisting. So if there's a random malware IP, the Windows Firewall is most likely not going to block that. However, there is a way to extend that functionality into Windows Firewall. You can actually use it to block a host of the most dangerous botnets out there. And today I'm gonna to show you how you can do that very simply with a two minute script and some intelligent automation. Before we get started, just wanted to announce that we'll be doing a custom workshop event for this video. So if you wanna join that, check out the link in description to join our Discord. It's a great way to hang out with the community. I'll be there, of course. You can ask any questions, we'll have fun, maybe even play some games. So if that's your kind of thing, join the Discord. In order to do this, we're going to use Windows Firewall's ability to create rules. Now using the GUI, it's pretty straightforward. You can select any type of rule. So for example, if you wanna filter a specific program, you select program. If you wanna block a port, you select port, predefined or custom. We're gonna go custom. And then essentially what we wanna do is for all programs, blacklist a specific remote IP address. So if we type in add and any kind of random IP over here, hit okay, next we can say block the connection. Give it a name and it's done. But that's just one IP and that's not very useful. What you wanna do is have a list of the most malicious IPs and update that list every day. And that is exactly what I'm gonna show you how to do today. So to start off, how are we gonna get this list of malicious IPs? For starters, you could go to abuse.ch and check out their botnet tracker. And this is going to give us a list of bad servers. They're hosting command and control infrastructure for attackers trick bots, emotat, whatever. And you can actually access this for free. And as you can see, the botnet C2IP gets generated every five minutes. It's available in plain text and JSON. You can also get the indicators of compromise as a CSV. Of course, this is just an example. You can use a variety of approaches. So you could also use this, for example, to blacklist outgoing connections to malware domains. So if you go to URL house, for example, you can see a list of malware URLs. And again, you could totally blacklist these IPs so that your computer would not be able to connect to them and download the malware. In theory, you could also use it to block Microsoft spying on you or any other servers you would like to block. The question is, how are you going to automate that and get that list up to date every day? Well, actually, it's not that hard. As you can see, I've written a very quick script that's going to do just that. And I'm going to run it and show you how it works. So first, we're going to import requests, CSV, subprocess. These are just some of the libraries that we're going to use to make our job easier. Then we're basically going to download the CSV file containing all of the IP addresses. And just so it's not intimidating, I'm gonna show you what that actually looks like manually. There's no black magic here, this is pretty straightforward. So if we take a look at the plain text, this is what it looks like. That's literally it. So you've got destination IP and then the IP addresses, and that's it. We're going to grab this file in a CSV format convert it to text, and then just automate typing in a command to add this to Windows Firewall. First of all though, I'm deleting every rule that already exists with this name, because what we're going to do is we're going to use this name to create rules to block malicious IPs. And I wanted to set it up so that every day it's going to delete everything and then get the new list of IPs. And that's important because malware IPs don't always stay the same. Sometimes an IP may be malicious because the attack 
attacker is controlling legitimate infrastructure, so it has to be dynamic. So first we're gonna delete everything so that every time the script runs, we have a new set of rules and the old rules don't just stay there. We're going to use CSV reader, a Lambda filter. What this is going to do is basically just filter out lines that do not start with hash because that is a comment line. And if we go back to our actual file, you can see that there is a bit of a heading that has the whole hash structure in it. So we don't want these lines to be included in our rules. You kind of want to start from here. And then for each row within that list, we're going to assign the variable IP to row one. That's because of the format of the CSV. And there's an additional check over here because sometimes you don't have a hash before the actual column name. If the text is not destination IP, which would be the heading of the column, we're going to grab that IP. So all of this is just so over here in the variable IP, we actually have the IP address. And then it's just going to print what IP it's going to block. It's going to run a command. And this command is basically going to add a rule, call it bad IP. The direction is outbound in this case. Obviously you want to add inbound as well. If you're trying to block the botnets from connecting to you, trying to prevent things like DDoS attacks, this is just an example. The action is block and remote IP equals, and then we're just passing the variable here. And then subprocess.run. This is just going to run the thing in PowerShell. It's the same as me copying and pasting this command into PowerShell and running it myself, except it's gonna do that for every single IP that's there in the whole list. Pretty straightforward. You could do it whichever way you want. So if, for example, you wanted to do the same thing, but for inbound, you would just copy and paste this um, and pretty much just change the out to an in and that would do it. If you wanna do both, then you just copy and paste this here and now it's running for both. Again, just to be clear though, this is a proof of concept. I'm just trying to show you what you can do with Windows Firewall. You can set it up however it makes sense in your environment. Now all that's out of the way, let's see it in action. So I'm just gonna open up regular command prompt. Remember, you have to do this as an administrator. Just gonna drag my script in. We're gonna run it. And hopefully that's going to add rules for each of these IPs. As you can see, it is displaying that on the screen. All of the IPs are being added one by one. And once the script completes, all of those rules are going to be in here. And we can check that it's doing that. So you can see for the outbound, we do have a lot of bad IP rules already. And if you open it, you're going to see that the scope says that these IP addresses which we've got from our block list derived from abuse reports, open source threat intel, and now we're actively blocking it on our system. You can of course use a similar workflow for any kind of firewall software, regardless of whether or not it's Windows firewall, third-party firewall. Typically good third parties will have that built in. So they're going to subscribe to a certain block list. But as far as I'm aware, I've never really seen Windows firewall block the IPs, the malware IPs I test with. So it may be a good exercise, especially if you're running some kind of server. Now, an extension to what we just did would be to use something like CrowdSec, which is an open source intrusion detection system and also the sponsor of this video. It's cross-platform, so you can install it on Windows or Linux. And then if you go into block lists, you pretty much have a list of different block lists that you can just subscribe to. So you don't have to manually go in, find a way to automate the integration of that. All of that work is done for you. You just click on the subscribe button and you just get a certain block list. There's some free ones. There are some that are premium. You've also got the ability to add custom decisions, which is kind of like a rule. And you can even add a captcha. So if you're hosting something, instead of just banning an IP, you can just force a captcha for an IP and then you can select a duration as well. You've also got the ability to plug into the threat intelligence. So if you wanted to check if an IP is safe or not, you can just type it in and it's going to tell you where it's located, what the community reports are, you can see how many queries were made in the last two hours. In this case, based on all the information, the confidence about this is unknown, but it can tell you if something is certainly malicious, for example. It's all community-based, so you can vote on it yourself. You can say if it's your IP, if it's false positive, or if it is malware. It's crowdsourced security, so it takes the concept that we just discussed, brings some of, again, the uh, fancy EDR, intrusion detection firewall type tools that you would see in a corporate environment to 
more users potentially. So if you're running a home server or something and you just wanted to up the amount of security you have on it, it's definitely worth checking out because it's pretty easy to deploy, not a huge barrier to entry. And they recently released a new version. They're constantly updating the UI and it's definitely going to get a lot easier to use as time goes on. So check them out using the link in description. Big thank you to CrowdSec for sponsoring this video. And now for the fun part, we will be hosting a custom Discord event, talk about different network approaches to protecting your own system. We'll be going through what we just discussed in the video, answering any questions you have. Also, you'll be able to go through the process with me if you like. A great way to join the community, say hello, get to know everyone. So don't forget to drop by. I love doing these events. They're always super fun. And in case you can't make this one, it's still worth joining the Discord because we will have more such events in the future. I do love hanging out with you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Please like and share the video if you enjoyed it. If you like the idea, I want to hear your thoughts in the comments. And don't forget to subscribe to the PC Security Channel. This is Leo. And as always, stay informed, stay secure.